Hello, this is Fidu Mr. Vyacheslav Tibichev, and here is a small video lesson timed to article Developing Prophylactic Thinking. Link to the full article you can find in the description below the video. Now we go into our example. As the first item need, position looks clearly in vice favor. They have some initiative on the king side, want to take on g6 and e6 by bishop later, or play h6 this idea to create the freed queen f6 and queen g7 this checkmate. Of course, black can give some checks with queen, but white will cover the king with the bishop. Totally focused on their own playing, Simon Agdestein forget to ask the question for himself. His opponent have got another strong side in the position, not only the queen which can make some checks. If he would ask it, he was find that on another end of the board they have a little but very dangerous best a pawn, which want to go to a1. In the game, what inaccurately played h takes g6, and after takes on the free, takes, takes, check, take, a4, it turns out that white failed to stop pawn promotion. They still tried to develop some counterplay, but it was not enough. a5, a3, take, and now king g7. Of course black shouldn't play king take e6, because after h6, a2, h7, queen, queen, what is absolutely okay, the queen ending is equal. Going back to the game, king g7, king e4, a2, and due to the fact that pawn came to a1, few moves later white resigns. Going back to the beginning, becomes obvious that white should protect the key square f3, through which black forced the transfer to winning endgame, and white could do it by playing bishop g2 or bishop g4. For example, after bishop g2, uh, game may continue something like check king b1 protecting the g6 pawn and here is the equal situation in the next game between richard rapport and victor lasnichka why stay under this serious choice they saw that bless freed was to play knight f4 using the fact that g3 pawn is located under the pin and creating ding and freed queen g2 this made. Preventing it while trying to change the queens, but sometimes better just to go away from the freed and infix the weak square. Rapper played knight d2, this idea to prevent knight f4 by queen c4, changing the queen. But black find another way to win it. They play bishop c5, and now it turns out that after take and knight f4, the c file is covered and there is no idea this changing anymore. White could try to play f3, but after take, can go check, another check. Black open the central lines and have a crushing attack. Again, going back to the beginning. It's clear that natural and the most important thing that right move was king h2. Now after knight f4, rook g1, white protects the g2 square. Black could try something like queen h6, check, queen f1, and I understand it not looks very great to place the pieces on third rank. Uh, but exactly here it was ok. Uh, black's resources are not enough to continue the attack while white starts to finish in the development. Remember that sometimes the most logical defense also the best defense. The world champion Tigran Vartanovich Petrosyan against Vladimir Savon in 1969 developed the strong initiative on the king side and looks like that he can immediately win the game this rook f3. 
three. Catching the queen. But in fact, black prepare a very crafty trap. After take on a free, take and rook h8, they take back the queen and transfer to the next nice endgame with possibility to create the best A or B pawn. But what in the game? Precisely calculate all of it and avoid it by playing e5. Black should play take on e5, check, king e6, takes, and here white have a decisive advantage. Black's king will not rescue in the center of the board. Be careful. Something that seems like a blunder, in fact, could be opening's last chance to save the game. Without any doubts, Jan Heimdone have a decisive advantage here against Eduard Spanier, just an extra piece on e6. But when you have them in position, no need to lose your head and concentration. Pointing the score sheet will not appear until the opening doesn't stop the clock. In the game, White decided that win here could be achieved whatever you like. He went to pick up for the extra bishop also a pawn. Here, for example, simple rook f7 check and later h6 and h7 leads to an easy win. But how I said previously, white want to win the a4 pawn and play rook h a7. Incredibly, but here after the not obvious Rook h1 check, takes and king g3, white's huge material advantage doesn't matter anything. They just cannot stop the rook e1 freed this mate just made. How you can see, loss of concentration only for one minute could take the win from your pocket. I hope that this lesson was useful for you and helps to improve your chess playing. Up to new meetings on the training channel Friendly Chess. Hello, this is Fidim Master VH Lapsilichev and here is a small video lesson dedicated to the article Developing Prophylactic Thinking Part 2. Link to the full article you can find in the description below the video. Take a look on this example. What can we see? It's clear that what have some advantage, they can develop the pressure against weak d6 pawn and have a notorious pair bishop's advantage. But almost all black pieces stays on good squares, so they have a good chances to give a full fight. I especially said almost, only one piece still not in the game, the knight on b7. If it was black's turn, they undoubtedly will play knight c5 and starts to attack our e4 pawn. But here it's white's turn so they need to prevent their knight's connection. b4 By this move, they totally cut off the knight on b7 from the game. He haven't got normal moves anymore. May seems like black can take on e4, so let's calculate it. After take on e4, he takes, takes, knight d5, takes, takes, and the difference between power of knights here is obvious. Knight on b7 even have not got any moves, while white queen and strongest knight on d5 began crashing at it. White just want to play queen d4 or rook e7, later maybe knight f6. So let's go to the beginning. After b4, Black can try to break the queenside snail on b4 by a5, but white just improve it after a3, and black still have a problem with this coordination. And Giant says that the best continuation here is just give up the pawn after d5, but after takes knight d6, of course only white here is playing for a win. Don't forget to control the position of the immobile pieces of the enemy, each of these dreams to improve their own position thus in many cases reverse the course of the struggle. Going to the next example, first let's try to understand who have an advantage here. 
I think that 99% of chess players want to play this position with white. It could be explained by different factors, but the main constrained black space and limited possibilities for their pieces. It may seem like white could play how they want without any plan, without looking for opponent's counterplay, because here it doesn't exist. But in fact, only one idea could help for black to save this tough position, and Peter Swidler find and immediately prevent it. Black's idea was to play knight a6, going on c5, but the point that is now the final destination. Later, knight goes on e5 through d7, where he will stabilize black's position. Swidler played bishop d3. Another possible way was bishop e3, but it's much more weaker, because after knight a6, bishop d3, knight c5, takes, white have doing little combination, but after d6, bishop c4, takes. They win the exchange, but black reach extremely strong bishop on e5, which will be block white's ideas moving through e5 and d4 squares. So, going back to the start, after bishop d3, black play knight a6 and white simply exchanging this. Takes, rook c6, check and rook fc1 and finally black haven't got any chances to defend from penetration of white's rooks clear that white have an advantage due to the possession of d file and bad placement of black's bishop on c8 but white have even concrete position of read here playing b4 they completely occupy black's queen side and fix weak pawns on a6 and b5 here doesn't help the connection of the bishop into the game, for example after e5, d8, tactical bishop g4, takes, takes, and now b4, and despite of equal material, black stays almost losing, white just want to take on a6 and b5, and hard to find a way to prevent it, for example after rook a8, or bishop b7. But by tactical decision on the first move, Anand escapes from the clutch. He played b4 and the tactical because after rook d8, rook c7, bishop d7, Shira wins the exchange, but I'm sure that Anand calculates all of it. He played rook c5, c6, takes b5 takes going from the pin b8 and rook c2 and despite of the material deficit black have reasonable counterplay here they will put their bishop on c5 and so try to eat all of pawns in the second rank sheriff still tries to put some problems but and managed to hold it finally the most important question in this example, what white want? It's clear that the idea is to open the lines on queen side, for example, A line, B line, and organize the counterplay instead black's activity on the king side. But great positional player Tigran Petrosian divines Pesky's plan and find the way to totally stop white's attack. He played firstly C4. After bishop e2, and now the key of his idea, a6, and it turns out that white's pawn failed to open the lines for rook. For example, if white play a5, on it follows b5. So if play b5, they play a5. In both cases, blocks the position. 
While White haven't got any active ideas, Petrosan developed his own plan against White Skin and win in this battle. Black's position looks pretty active, but Kasparov here have an idea to block all of Black's possibilities by playing c5 and reaching huge space advantage. In the game he's opened Bakro, couldn't find it, and after a long canceling c5, going back on b7, changing queens, takes, takes, d6, bishop c4, he faced with serious problems. If he take on c5, he will have dubious triple pawns on c file instead of white strong best e pawn. Or after d5, bishop e2, white will have clear plan of actions. They can go with their king on d4, for example, and trying to unhinge black's position with rooks. Play b4 and double rooks. On a file, making the pressure on a7 pawn. Or go these rooks on h file and make the pressure on h7 pawn. Here we have a lot of opportunities, and Bakro failed to hold for really long. Going back to the beginning, now they know that black should stop the pawn movement, but right now c5 is impossible because rook on a8 stay under the heat so the only one right way was queen c5 and if i try to disturb the queen by queen e3 like in the game on it follows takes on e3 rook e3 and here already they can play c5 later bishop go on b7 on the main diagonal and looks like black solved their problems and have a nice endgame. The next example is not really hard but very helpful. By their last move, queen d2, white create the idea of exchanging black square bishops. Important to understand that black's play will be on the queen side. They want to play a5, they take b4, perhaps put the knight on d4. For all of these ideas, they need their bishop. He controls the main diagonal, organize the pressure on b2 pawn, support the knight when he will go on d4. Summing up these factors, it becomes obvious that black should save their bishop. Right now, if it was white's turn, they will play bishop h6 and bishop can't go from g7 because rook on f8 stay under the heat. So the prophylaxis here consists in move rook e8. This idea to play after bishop h6, bishop h8, saving your bishop. Remember. You need to track on every move these small tricks, all together in the end lead us to the desired result. I hope that this lesson was useful for you and helps to improve your chess play. Up to new meetings on training channel Friendly Chess. Hello, here with you again for Master Vyacheslav Tilichev. And it's a vinyl video lesson on the prophylaxis theme dedicated to the article Developing Prophylactic Thinking Part 3. Link to the full article you can find in the description below the video. In the following position, clear that advantage on the black side. They just have an extra exchange. But here is two important moments which should be spotted and understood. Black's pieces arrange in such way that they fail to attack anything in white's position. Here the most vulnerable place is a pawn on e2 but extremely hard to create an initiative against it, and even more, the second moment that white want to transport their rook on d2 through the d1 square, so defending the pawn and just build some kind of positional fortress. However, Vasily Ivanchuk against Evgeny Bareyev find a way to combine these two factors in one and play bishop c2, not only taking control about d1 square, 
but also at the appropriate time preparing the bishop a4 and later bishop b5 maneuver, after which pawn on e2 will become a real weakness. For example, in the beginning position, rook e8 take on aim e2 pawn immediately looks good, but not protects us from white's development. After rook d1 and rook d2 later, they defend on e2 and have reasonable plane. This type of prophylax, which you can see after bishop c2, called active. At the first sight, black just protect themselves from the clear positional freed, but they not worsen the position of their pieces. On the contrary, they find a way to protect and to free tens at the same time. In the next position, you can see that it is still opening, and both sides create their own plans. I think you know that such kind of pawn formation that black chose called the hedgehog, due to scratch a looking pawn on 6 rank. Black's plan to play d6, later a6, and put the knight on d7. You should understand that it's very important factor to put knight exactly on d7. Here he much more flexible compared to the alternative on c6. He doesn't cover the bishop on b7, so black creates a pressure on weak e4 pawn and even improves this pressure by probable jump on c5. No doubts, Viktor Korchnoi know this typical arrangement and find a way to put problem visit to his opening Bartolome Maceja. Should be noted that direct e5 untimely here and looks very dangerous from positional point of view. After knight h5 takes, takes, white temporarily protect themselves from d6. But now the bishop on b7 became really dangerous and also black always have idea to play something like f6 and after exchanging of pawns we look at the white's king side. So we going back to the beginning and see that Karchnoi played rook d1 and it's clear that black have some problems with the realization of their plan. For example d6 here just losing the pawn after e5, knight e8 and bishop g3 and pawn on d6 can't be protected. For example going back to rook d1 Logical queen c7, this idea to move d6 later, met with knight b5, and after queen c5, b4, queen h5, takes, takes, white put their knight on d6. Of course, it's not what black wants from this position. Such a usual move like rook d1 forced black to solve real difficult tasks. Of course, they just just can finish the development by knight c6, but Krishna completely destroyed the harmony of black's plans and without any doubts win the opening battle. Very important to feel such moments like this. Rook d1 became really annoying for black, while I'm sure most of people prefer just finish their development and play some normal moves like bishop e2. In the next example, it's important to find a key square in white's position. To do it, first of all we need to determine the most strong factor in it, the pawn chain and exactly the pawn on d5, which constrains black's opportunities and blocks weak pawn on d6. Looks like the main element in this chain is a2 pawn, but in fact it's a pawn on c4. It helps to our nail on d5 and exactly on it black built all their plane. And even if it normally protects right now, it doesn't mean that few moves later this pawn will not get under the real danger. Ruslan Irzhanov choose a reasonable decision to overprotect it and played knight d1 going on e3. After takes on d5, rook g8, bishop d3, knight h5, takes, black takes on g7 with knight, but perhaps better was to play king g7, saving the possibility to play knight f4. But the plan after knight g7 is pretty obvious. The chief of base army Aman Murat Kakagildiv want to transfer their knight on d4 through f5 square. So white played knight e3 over protecting the pawn on c4 and also taking f5 square under the control. By the way, note that with overprotection of c4 square, 
White also gained another profit. Knight on e3 controls f5 square and also covers the e-file. In other words, knight on e3 just is much more better and flexible than on c3. b takes c4. I think better was just play f5, creating the idea to play f4 and full of fight ahead here. After the mistake takes on c4, finally Black's nurse breaks and they open the b file. But they will never get to the c4 pawn anymore and already white organized their own plane on open line. Takes f5 and queen c3. And now looking on the diagram and it's clear that white's pieces stays perfectly but look at the black's knights one of them nothing doing on g7 another have even more worse perspective he need go back or queen on d8 will not be able to move so black play knight b7 here white capturing the open file that tries to exchange the queens here, 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 takes, finally captures the file and weaknesses on a6 and d6 will decide the game. The next game between Sergei Dolmatov and Janusz Kosielski is just a storehouse of information about overprotection. Dolmatov overprotect everything in his position. Look at the board. White is a pawn up, but black also have strong sides. They press on e4 and b5 pawns. They have two clear ideas. First and most direct is to play a4 and a3, breaking the queen side. Another one is to play rook c8. At some moment fritting this rook c3 and knight e4 later, breaking the center. All white's advantage rests on the c3 knight, but here he is in danger, so Dolmato find non-standard way of overprotection. Knight d2, rook c8 and knight db1, a very original knight maneuver. First of all, threat of sacrificing on c3 doesn't exist anymore, however black tries to animate their initiative a4 and now direct knight a3 leads to a trouble after take on c3 take d5 and black opening the bishop and counterplay enough at least for the equality so going back to a4 black frees also this a4 a3 here and white again protect their monumental knight on c3 rook d3 now black can't play a3 because after just takes it leads to nothing so they play knight bd7 rook hd1 knight c5 takes takes knight a3 and now our protection was completed and clear that whilst have all of benefits in their position and even more now they also take a control on the d5 square and after they will play knight d5 but of course Nemtsovich teaching about our protection not necessary to bring to the absurd for example in this game between Mikhail Botvinnik and Sala Flor Famous world champion play mysterious rook fd1, putting all major pieces on the d file. Of course, it was absolutely unnecessary here because pawn on d5 already have three defendings this one, this, and this one. So, black even have not got a freeze on it. I don't think that it have direct influence on the final result, but no doubt that it was just a losing of tempo. For example, normal way was rook e2, trying to take a control on the opened e line. Later white can try to double the rooks by playing rook e1. A mysterious rook moves team 
Of course, this is individual article. So here just a last example which shows how it can happen in usual practice game. Rook g1. About what you think when so moves like this? Just a loss of tempo. How putting the rook on totally closed line could be useful? So let's go back and try to understand the logic of Turkish GM Suat Atalik. He saw that his opening Yahya Eskanderi want to break his pawn structure after h5, h4 promotion. But why not just to prevent it by h4? The point is that in such close position like this, all pawn promotion should be done with increased accuracy. For example, somewhere in future, perhaps it will be good if white can play h3 and g4, but how we know pawns are not going back. But if not play h4, hard to see the way to protect h5, h4 promotion. Atalik solved this problem by tactical decision, which only at first sight looks dubious and senselessly. The rook g1. So black played h4, and after takes, takes, became obvious why white play rook g1. Now they have a control on the g file and especially on the g5 square. So it's impossible to play here rook h4 due to bishop g5. So black need to play queen take h4. And now after bishop g5, queen h7. After take on h2, long castle, black queen risk to not go back into the camp. So going on h7 and now knight b5. White piece is much more active than opponents. Remember, sometimes truth hides in such senseless seams move like rook g1. I hope that this lesson was useful for you and helps to improve your chess playing. Up to new meetings on training channel friendly chess.